Hi, I'm Jim. Welcome to the PFO channel. Today we're going to be working on the FJ Cruiser. I'm going to be installing an onboard air compressor system, and that includes fabricating, designing and fabricating a bracket to hold the air pump under the hood of the FJ. So we'll walk you through the whole process of how I figure out how big it has to be, uh, where I can locate it, how to mount it, uh, where the supports need to be, and then uh, the whole process of fabricating it here in the shop. So we hope you enjoy this video. It's kind of a fun process. Be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Let's get on with it. Okay, first let's unpack and have a look at the parts that I pulled together for this build. Now this is a pressure switch. I chose one that will turn on at 90 PSI and off at 120 PSI. I'm going to set this system up without a tank, but I'll use the shutoff pump to turn the system off when the hose reaches 120 PSI, such as when I'm moving from tire to tire, or if I forget to turn off the main power switch. The pump comes with a section of nylon hard plastic hose to remote mount the intake air filter. The air filter can also be screwed into the end of the pump directly. It comes with a package of accessories including the air intake filter, extra filter pad. The pump itself is a Hans Duke C304AB. It includes a braided stainless steel leader hose with a check valve and a swivel built in. This is a 12 volt pump that draws 23 amps. It has a maximum working pressure of 200 psi and it delivers 1.75 cubic feet per minute at 0 psi. Notably though, it has a duty cycle of 100% at 100 psi. With that 100% duty cycle, I should be able to air up all four tires on the FJ Cruiser without having to worry about it triggering the over temperature protection switch. So that 100% duty cycle and the low price are the two main factors that helped me choose this particular model over some of the other brands that are more commonly used by people in the off-roading and overlanding communities. Also from Amazon, I purchased a FY Power 22-piece air compressor accessory kit. It has the quick disconnects and the various brass fittings to go with that, along with a hose. It comes with an air gun. This kit came with a nice handheld inflator. It's got the kind that you can clamp it right onto the valve stem on the tire, so you don't have to set and push on it the whole time. It's a lot easier with the trigger style to hold it down while you're airing up a tire. It also has the button on the side for deflating. I picked up a brass four-way fitting. It has quarter inch NPT in all four corners. I'm going to use this on the end of the leader hose and I'll put the pressure switch in one of the directions and then a quick disconnect to uh, put in an air hose underneath the hood in the other. The fourth direction is for future planning where I might add a tank later but for now I'll probably just plug that channel. Okay, let's go over to the FJ I'm going to relocate the tripod and then we'll take this over and kind of test fit it. Ideally I'd like to put it under the hood in the engine compartment. That's the compartment that generally occurs under the hood. And the reason for that is because I believe it will have some protection. You can see that when I hit puddles on the road there's some, some splash that happens up from the tires uh, because even though there's inner fenders and shrouding it can't completely protect it from splash off the tires. It's a lot cleaner than it would be mounting it underneath the vehicle. This came with an inline fuse but I think I'm probably going to end up taking up one of the spaces in my auxiliary fuse block. The place I've got in mind is somewhere in this area. I'm going to have to fabricate a bracket. Let me show you where, what I'm actually looking at underneath here. Alright, so this is kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know if, depending on where I, where I can get the bracket aligned, I can either put it on its side or have it standing up and I don't know if I could fit it nah, that, that'll be too tight that way so it's gonna go side to side orientation and it'll certainly be low enough to miss the, the hood and if I do the bracket right I can still get to my fuses underneath to reset them if needed so what I need to do is work out my connection points where I can attach a bracket 
and that will kind of determine the shape that the bracket takes. Now here's one possibility. It's the bolt, one of the bolts that is supporting the fuse block that I put in. It's right there. You can see that? And that goes into a pre-existing threaded hole in the sidewall of the fender. Uh, there's another possibility up here, which is one of the is the mounting bolt for the lower end of the support strut. That's a possibility. There is an unused stud right there, right here. This is a pre-existing one that was for some non-existent accessory. I did make use of another similar one like that to support the bottom end of my uh, bracket that's holding all my breakers over here, but this one is still available and that has that's probably a six millimeter stud on there, so I'll just put a nut on that, but I could support a, a flange with a hole on it to come off of that and then uh, bend up 90 degrees and then another 90 and it could support one corner of a flat a flat uh, plate in this area to be the shelf that I put that pump on that I'm trying to envision setting in this area here so I've got three points of support and I would like something off of this end over here somewhere there's a threaded hole a couple of threaded holes on the engine so those are a little bit tempting. There's another one over here. The reason I am probably not going to take advantage of those is because the engine is on rubber mounts and the body is on rubber mounts. The engine could be moving one direction while the body is flexing a different direction and bridging between those two independently moving things with a little metal shelf would be problematic. So I think I'm gonna avoid using those tempting locations. Um, down here on the firewall I see a couple of studs pointing up that already have a nut and a bracket on it. So this this would give me one here, two, three, and then four back here. And those are pretty widely spaced so those would start to look like sufficient support for a shelf. So my next step is going to be to get a piece of cardboard and start making a mock-up out of cardboard with uh, the size and, and roughly the bends that I need to reach out and take advantage of those four different mounting points. I will get together some cardboard and come back and start bending and see, see where we go from there.